There's a candidate forum in Frisco tonight to name a new county commissioner. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. First, a discrimination lawsuit against the Summit County Sheriff's Office is moving forward in U.S. District Court. Last week, the office filed documents as the defendant in a case brought by Jared Dennis, a deputy fired in 2016, now suing for discrimination due to his alcoholism. Documents include a letter of suspension and other paperwork. Dennis was fired after an incident involving his wife and allegedly working drunk. He argues the office never provided rehab opportunities. Alcoholism is a disability under federal law. Dennis is suing for an undisclosed amount including back pay and damages, he currently works for Dillon Police Department. A county commissioner seat is up for grabs this week, and eight Democratic candidates are in the running, including town council members and a former mayor. A vacancy committee of 43 local Democrats makes the appointment after a public forum in Frisco tonight. Committee member Josh Blanchard explains. It's not uncommon for this process to happen, although this doesn't happen usually. The candidates boast serious resumes. Breck council members Elizabeth Lawrence and Aaron Giello have applied, along with former town manager Gary Martinez and past Dillon Mayor Kevin Burns. Burns. Blanchard. It indicates how many talented people would uh, do a great job in the seat that are right here in District 1. Commissioner Dan Gibbs leaves the board for a state position just weeks after running unopposed for a third and final term. Local Republican Party Chairman Kim McGahee says the appointment process is legal, but Gibbs' timeline is sneaky. They knew ahead of time that Gibbs would be vacating the commissioner's seat. They knew that last November but waited until after the swearing-in deadline in order to make you know, make it an in-party appointment. What do Democrats say? The fact that he ran unopposed may just mean that he himself was a very popular, hard-working person in this community. Tonight's candidate forum is open to the public beginning 6 p.m. at the Senior Center in Frisco. Snow isn't the only hazard shutting down I-70 these days. Two or three times this winter, CDOT has closed eastbound lanes at Floyd Hill for sun glare between 7 and 8.30 a.m., causing major delays. Spokesman Bob Wilson. We try not to make them any longer than they need to be because that is the commuter hour and there's a lot of people coming into uh, the front range into the metropolitan area for work. But it's not just commuter traffic. What uh, created more of an urgency is uh, Clear Creek High School moved. And they moved to an area basically right over the top of Floyd Hill before you go into Jefferson County. So you had a lot of school traffic that was heading up that way as well. The most recent closure was in early January. Wilson says sun glare has led to accidents and several fatalities in recent years. CDOT diverts traffic from the interstate to the frontage road when glare gets bad. But what's the point? It's to slow drivers down. There can be a problem on that roadway as well. It's just not as bad as it is on I-70 because I-70 sits up quite a bit higher than Highway 40, especially at the lower ends. Floyd Hill is the state's only major route to close regularly for sun glare. 14 Summit athletes made the U.S. Ski Mountaineering team this season. That's one in 14 members, and most of them, like longtime Breck local Kate Zander, balance racing with training, work, and raising children. To be truthful, I actually carry my kids around in backpacks, and that seems to help. It's just slow, resistant sort of weight training. Don't really have another choice. So what keeps Xander motivated even when the kids get heavy? For me, ski mode can be just a day in the mountains and I love that. In March, the 32-year-old makes her very first trip to ski Mo World Championships and Breckenridge has prepared her for the Swiss Alps physically and mentally. Anything high above tree line, a lot of people kind of whimper when it gets low light and high winds. But growing up in Breckenridge, that's that's sort of par for the course. Xander travels to Worlds with U.S. Schemo veterans Jamie Brady, Sierra Anderson, and Nikki La Rochelle, plus 10 junior athletes. In sports, the Avalanche played the Wild tonight, puck drop is 7.30, and the Nuggets played the Jazz at 8.30 on ESPN. In World Cup ski racing news, Lindsey Vaughn is on the start list for tomorrow's downhill training in Germany, while men continue downhill training in Austria. And in local sports, brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Weiss Agency, Tiger Swimming and Diving is at home today for a dual meet with Glenwood. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.